Right, hey guys, so it's been a while since I've done one of these video blogs, so I thought I'd just sort of update you as to where I am, I suppose. Now, last time I spoke, I said that I had a university visit coming up, and I have, of course, done that now, and I've also had another visit to Loughborough University, and I was fortunate enough to have offers from both of those universities, and so hopefully the next one I have, which is, I think, in late March, hopefully that goes as well as the other two. Now, so most of this video blog will in fact be about me going over sort of some of the tool storage and things like that in the workshop. I was asked again a couple of times about that sort of thing. So I thought I'd just take you around and show you what there is to that. There's really not much about it, but I will go over that anyway. Now, what I wanted to do before I started that though was actually mention um, Drew who uh, some of you guys may remember in fact Drew sent me a whole quite big box of wood in fact about a couple of years ago I think it was maybe a year and a half two years ago uh, which in fact I've still got a couple of those pieces of wood which I've been saving for something special I suppose now what I wanted to talk to you about was these now Look at those. Those are jaws for a chuck. In fact, the same chuck which I have, of course. Now, when he heard that I had lost one of my jaws, he offered to send his spare set, in fact, to help me out um, for only the cost of the postage from the US. So I am very grateful to him, of course, and I've said thank you several times to him. But I do want to say thank you to you once again, Drew, for sending me those. You've saved me quite a bit of money if I probably wouldn't have ever got round to buying another set because it's 40, 40 pounds at least for a set of these jaws and these they are slightly used but they'll work just as well on my chucks so thank you Drew. <laughs> So sadly, I won't be able to put up a new project this week. The bottle opener project, which I just did, took much longer than I expected it would, in fact. So I wasn't able to get going on the next project, and as a result, there won't be a post this week for a new project, and hopefully you guys will understand. <laughs> It has been nice, in fact, to be posting more regularly, and I will continue to try and do that, of course, but depending on the circumstances which arise and different sort of things regarding college, uh, whether that continues remains to be seen, of course. Uh, but other than that, the actual main channel seems to be doing really well at the moment, so gaining subscribers. Um, fairly well and uh, the videos seem to be doing quite well also and um, regarding subscribers I w it would be really great if all you guys watching will of course recommend me to your friends or people you know that are interested in this sort of thing it'd be really great to start get, uh, building uh, the audience even more that would be really great Right, so again, it's just going to be one of those deals where I pick up the camera and just walk you around the workshop to show you some of the storage methods for the tools that hung up on the wall. And hopefully that will answer some of the questions that you've had. So the workshop is a little bit messy, but I will come over here and take a look at the tool racks which I've got here which generally I store, most of my hand tools are up here on the wall. It just seems to be the best place for them. Now, as far as uh, I've got a couple of squares here, which I've just made some little sort of slots, or uh, if I get up and over here, you might just be able to make out that and they just slot in like that. I'm not really a great big fan of overcomplicating tool storage. I've got something to hold this marking gauge, which if I'm honest, I <laughs> hardly ever use. Most of the time I just use an adjustable square and a pencil. Now uh, I've got a couple of mallets on these different sort of hooks. Really, I just cobble together anything that I can at the time. Uh, uh, my hammers are literally just hung on screws as are many of the other tools like rulers and 
so over here I've just again got the same sort of thing where I can I've literally just sort of packed it out with a couple of little tiny spacers screwed on a strip of wood and I've just held in the chisels and all the sort of different pliers and various things like that in that way I've got a couple of magnetic things here which I seem to hold my files and all different sorts of allen keys and things on there uh, but to be honest I could use the same method as up here to hold those files there's no reason why I couldn't do that again all the other tools they're just held on with screws so coming over here again so the plane is held on with a couple of little uh, hooks I suppose I've made out of wood and they're just held on in that way all the planes and then again held on with screws these sort of spoke shaves and uh, cabinet scrapers I've just cut a couple of grooves a slight maybe five degree angle I cut that into there and that way the cabinet scrapers can just sit in there like that and I've uh, got my Japanese hand saws, a little hook and a, uh, this little metal thing just to stop it falling off. Any, to be honest, anything with a hole in it or a way which I can hang it off a screw, that's exactly how I'm going to do it because it's much quicker that way. So this is a recent change, I suppose, to the workshop. I decided that I wanted to actually have a bit more permanent space to put my clamps and that's what I've done. Same situation, I've spaced it out with a block of wood and then just again stuck another strip across and that's how I've mounted my cla all my F clamps. Most of the clamps I've got are F clamps. Uh, I just find them the easiest to use and they hang on like that and that seems to work reasonably well they seem to stay up there fine uh, again anything in the workshop I'm not a great fan of over complicated things just for the sake of making them more complicated now I thought I'd quickly come over to the lathe tools I've actually some seem to be sitting on the floor I need to make another rack but the lathe tools literally just a strip of wood with a bunch of holes in uh, screwed up there again all the other tools just a strip of wood <laughs> with a bunch of holes in uh, I've also I find occasionally use a hacksaw over at the lathe find that kind of useful for getting a really thin cut line um, on something on the lathe so I've got that over here as well now someone did actually ask me about the camera arm uh, which I often use when I'm over here at the lathe which I have actually had to modify slightly for the new camera and it was literally a case of attaching a really scrappy piece of plywood to uh, build out the what currently held on the camera now as far as it goes it would be great it would be you could use it to adapt it as like a dust extraction arm for over at the drill press if you uh, attached a extraction hose at this end that would work quite well now as far as it goes if i get you above there you can see it's just made up of a load of these pieces of identical plywood with a drill cut into those now as far as the camera arm goes it's literally just a bunch of pieces of plywood cut to this shape if you can see up here and I drilled a hole through all of them and I was initially going to put some dowels through but I didn't I uh, couldn't be bothered to do that so I had all these bolts laying around anyway so I thought I'd use those as a temporary alternative and those are kind of useful because you can tighten them up to uh, the sort of stiffness that you need 
and it's actually held on with this sort of temporary um, so I can move it around it I can just undo this wing nut slightly and the entire camera arm just slides off like that so the camera arm actually just came about from necessity really I wanted a way to hold the camera above the lathe and because the there I have the lathe right up against the wall most of the time uh, I don't have the space to get a tripod behind there so I needed something that would just sit above it and the it's a bit cumbersome this for the rest of my filming in the workshop I just use the tripod for that but for the lathe it is kind of useful to have this it sort of moves around quite freely and I can put it in all sorts of different places I've also got another mount for it over here so it makes it quite easy to set up different camera angles right so I've actually come back over to here and you can actually see the new drill press table I still need to stick a finish of that on there of some kind I haven't got around to that yet uh, this is actually what I wanted to show you this is a wooden handle which I am working on for the drill press the drill press came with this well uh, the guy that gave it to me it had this handle attached which is fine but once you start getting any rotation it gets a bit cumbersome so I'm trying to make a little three handle thing and I'll turn some little handles to I'll dowel onto here nothing too fancy but I think that should be quite good when I finally get that done so one final thing that I thought I would quickly mention is this T-square style fence I suppose it is uh, that I used to use for the table sort of course but now just pretty much get used for the router table now because I was asked by about five separate people uh, over the course of the last few months I thought I would actually write a web page for more detail about this uh, fence it's it's not very complicated at all and it's certainly not perfect it doesn't give you the same sort of results as the fence over on my new table saw would ever give but it is quite it was quite good and I think it was actually better than the one that came with the saw so I'll be posting more details about this over on the website and you can expect that in the next couple of days uh, hopefully okay so that's pretty much it for this video blog now just once again before I go I wanted to say one final thank you to Drew for sending me his spare jaw set I really appreciate it so I'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye.